Metcalf Arena as is tradition the final game of the Boston Bruins alumni regular season is right here in Brockton against Peter Crone's Black and Blues crew it's its star-studded lineup let's check out all the action we're here with the man the myth the legend a garden legend a legend in my own mind yes but I feel like a legend when I'm wearing this magic ring here this uh, it's a Superman ring or whatever. This is called the Stanley Cup Championship Ring 2011 that I proudly, proudly wear and uh, hope to be wearing it for many years to come. Here we are in Brockton, my favorite city. I love it. You sing the national anthem today. You've got to have some fond memories singing at the, at the TD Garden of the National Anthem. Tell us about some of your favorite moments. Some of the favorite moments is when like uh, uh, the day that uh, uh, they brought back one of the Bruins players that was paralyzed, Norman Levier, and they, two of the Bruins players uh, uh, escorted him down the ice while I sang, should old acquaintance be forgot? And uh, he didn't die, but uh, Norman Levier, but it was a, a very memorable moment. Right now, it's time to meet your black and blue all-stars. First, he's played all over the world with the black and blues. He's been their captain for many, many years. Without him, we would not be here today. Let's give it up for the captain, number 11, retired lieutenant from the Brockton Police, it's Peter Crow. Starting in goal tonight from Taunton, Mass, he's nicknamed Grump, number one, Mike Mulkern. Wearing number six on defense, a sergeant with the New Bedford Police, it's Scott Morton. Wearing number nine and four, he's from the Massachusetts State Police. Please welcome Greg Doherty. Wearing number 11, a captain with the Massachusetts State Police on defense, Matt Roy. At forward, from the Mass State Police, number 11, Peter Leduc. At forward, from Stoughton, Mass, number 12, Tom O'Neill. He's a detective and lieutenant from the Massachusetts State Police. On defense, number 14, Paul McGee. At forward, a sergeant with the Brockton Police, number 20, Kevin Jones. At forward, from the Raymond Police Department, number 23, Bobby Smith. In goal for Brockton, number 30, Ryan Dragonetti. On defense, a lieutenant with the Massachusetts State Police, number 46, Paul Lynch. And wearing number 72 and forward from the Massachusetts State Police, it's Ken Braley. The honorary coach for the Black and Blues is Massasoit Community College Senior Vice President, Nick Palancis. Coach out of a hand for your Black and Blues. And now let's meet the Boston Bruins alumni. First, introducing our guest skater today. He's only been skating for four months, but he's been falling down for 20 years. He's from the United States Navy in Lynn, Massachusetts. He won this through the Boston Bruins Foundation. Please welcome in his first game with the Boston Bruins alumni, number 72, John Wallace. Wearing number one, 15 years, the NHL, over 500 games as an NHL goaltender. Three times he played in the Stanley Cup Final, but today he plays forward. Number one, Reg Lovelin. On defense, drafted by the St. Louis Blues. He played nine years in the NHL and spent three seasons with the Boston Bruins. He has over a thousand career penalty minutes. Number six, Glenn Featherstone. Out of Bowden, a five-year NHL veteran who played with Colorado, Cleveland, and the California Golden Seals. In 1976, he played in the Canada Cup as a member of Team USA from South Boston, number 11, Fred Ahern. Next up, out of Boston College, where he was an All-American in hockey and baseball. Three years in the NHL. Today, he's the Boston Bruins 
youth hockey director. He's the all-time leading scorer in the history of the Boston Bruins alumni, the bomber number 17, assistant captain Tommy Sungin. <laughs> On defense out of Boston University, where he won a national championship in 1995, he played in the American Hockey League and participated in seven consecutive All-Star games. He played six years in the NHL, including with Boston. Three times he had 10 or more goals in the season. Please welcome number 18, Rich Brennan. <laughs> Out of Boston College, a 10-year NHL veteran, he played in two Stanley Cup finals for the Boston Bruins in 1988 and 1990. Played in the power play and he killed penalties. Today, he's the executive director of the Boston Bruins Foundation. We call him Swoop, number 20, Bob Sweeney. A goaltender out of Merrimack College entering his fourth season with the, the fourth decade with the Boston Bruins alumni. He is the son of a Bruins Hall of Famer and Hockey Hall of Famer, Woody Dumar. Please welcome number 31, Jeff Dumar. Out of RPI, where he won the national championship. He played eight years in the NHL and won the seventh player award with the Boston Bruins in 1990. Please welcome number 31, John Carter. On defense, Dr. Michael Los Angeles Kings, he played four years in the NHL and scored a game-winning goal to defeat the Buffalo Sabres in the Boston Bruins drive from the 1988 Stanley Cup Finals. He has over 3,300 career penalty minutes. We call him shoe number 40, Bruce Shoebottom. From Hartford, Connecticut, six-year NHL veteran. He broke in with the Toronto Maple Leafs and also played with Calgary and the Boston Bruins. He single-handedly defeated the Montreal Canadiens on Hockey Night in Canada when he scored two goals in the old Maple Leafs Gardens. Please welcome the son of a six-time Stanley Cup champion, number 41, E. LaRose. Out of Boston College, a member of the 1992 U.S. Olympic hockey team, Drafted on the Calgary Flames, he would go on to have two sits with the Boston Bruins and play on the Anaheim Money Ducks inaugural team. Please welcome from Wayman, number 40, Tim Tim Sweeney. A uh, first round draft pick on the Hartford Railers out of Lawrence and Tacky. He was a member of the 1984 U.S. Olympic hockey team where he led the team in goal scoring. He played three years in the NHL at Hartford, Washington Capitals, and the Boston Bruins. His top of the number 44, Dave Jensen. Next up, a defenseman who played two seasons in the NHL of both Boston and New York Rangers. He won a call in the with the Providence Bruins and again with the Hartford Wolf Pack in 2000. A former captain of the Worcester Ice Caps, he has nearly 19 years of experience in professional hockey. Number 71, Terry Burchard. And finally, a 14-year NHL record of rookie with the New York Rangers. He's a three-time NHL All-Star and two-time member of Team Canada. He has over 1,000 career points. Please welcome him to number 16, Rick Middleton. Our honorary coach today for the Boston Bruins alumni, we have Brockton Mayor Bill Carpenter, but we also have a two-year NHL veteran from Manchester, Rhode Island, who scored a goal in his very first shift five seconds into his NHL career with the Boston Bruins. He's one of three brothers to play in the National Hockey League. Please welcome Mr. Bill Bennett. <laughs> a special thanks to the Director of Hockey Operations, Patterson Bob Cormier. Our trainers, Frank Walker and Mike Foley, and Alex Pazanson. Introducing our officials for today's team, he's coming off a broken thumb. He's the supervisor of ECAC officials, and he's officiated outdoor winter classics at both Fenway Park and Gillette Stadium. Number nine, Don Garcia. And from just up the road in Abington, Massachusetts, straight from the offices of the National Hockey League, we call him Specs. Please welcome Rick Cobbin. Whoops. We're here with John Horrigan, the voice of the Boston Bruins alumni. Tell us what you do with the alumni and what brings you down to Brockton today. Well, this is uh, my 24th season. I've never been given the job. I've just been sitting in for 24 years, but maybe next. Um, well, this is the final game of the 2016-2017 campaign. We play about 40 games a year in the United States and Canada. 
Uh, this year we traveled to Tampa Bay, um, played the Tampa Bay Lightning, came out on the short end of that. Um, traveled through the Canadian Maritimes. And this is the 26th annual game um, with the Black and Blues and with Peter and Karen Crone. There's no game like this in North America with any NHL alumni franchise. So this game has so much pedigree. And uh, it's, it's always um, the passage or the rite of spring when we you know, finish up here in Brockton. Take us through some of your favorite alumni game moments. I think um, the New, uh, New Year's Eve 2015 outdoors at Gillette Stadium when Reggie Lemon, who hadn't played goal in 15, 20 years, had to get his pads out of a museum, along with Andrew Raycroft, who just joined the Boston Bruins alumni, teamed up to defeat the Montreal Canadiens, which was won by a Ray Bork uh, shootout goal. That was probably my favorite. Um, some of the games that we've had in Canada together have been wonderful. We've played in Labrador and Northern Extremes. So there's just so many memories, and you know, a thousand games smolder in my rearview mirror. What makes your experience with the Bruins alumni special and other than the, the game day voice, your involvement with the Bruins uh, Foundation, the Bruins alumni? Well, first of all, they're the best friends any guy could possibly have. Second of all, they're my only friends that I have at my age. Um, when I first did it, oh, it was the Bruins, you know, the veteran and the, the, you know, the, the legacy and protecting uh, uh, the tradition, but they've invited me into their family, my wife and I, and they're just good people. Their wives are good people and we're a family. So. They're my only friends, man. To sing the national anthem of both Canada and the United States of America. Just the United States national anthem. How about the Finnish national anthem? Lithuanian? Okay. Folks, she's a legend. Since the 1970s at the Boston Garden, and traditionally we're very honored to have you sing the national anthem today. Please welcome Mr. Rene Rancourt.
Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome into AZ Offerina for a special presentation of BCA Sports. Today, it's the 26th annual Black and Blues against the Boston Bruins alumni, the season finale for the Boston Bruins alumni. And we have a good one today. Such names as Rick Middleton, Tommy the Bomber Sargent, and of course, Peter Crone. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Bringing you all the action high above the ice at AZ Alpharina in Brockton. There's number 18 for the Black and Blues, uh, rather number 12, Tom O'Neill of the Stoughton Police Department. Glenn Featherstone. Saucer pass complete to Carter. Carter on sides, trying to get it to Glenn Featherstone, and O'Neill takes over for the Black and Blues. Up to Bob Smith, he's really got some wheels, and it's broken up by the skate of Virtue, number 71 for the Bruins alumni. Two 25-minute halves in this game. And of course, the Bruins alumni wearing their away black jerseys, gold and white trim, a shot and a good save by Jeff Dumart, the son of a six-time NHL Stanley Cup champion. And Ryan Dragonetti in the net for the black and blues. Tim Sweeney, number 42, on the ice. He's hanging along the blue line, and he's unable to receive the long lead pass, but he recovers a shot and a save by Mike Mulkern of the Taunton Police Department. And he holds on for a face-off, 22 minutes and 45 seconds remaining. The officials for today's game, none other than Specs McGee of Barnum and Bailey fame, and Donnie Garcia, in a shot, and it's going to be in the pads of Mulkern. Fred Hearn at the blue line. Rich Brennan now. Now the bomber behind the net. Loose in the slot. Cleared out by Morton. The black and blues into the Bruins zone. Saucer pass broken up. Dumark got a stick on that one. Now a shot, and this one is saved by Dumart, cleared to the sideboards. Sweeney and Sweeney in, and this one deflects on Mulkern, and we're gonna have a whistle and a face-off, the third of the night in the black and blue zone. Specs Common dropping this puck. Bob Sweeney taking it. Swoop now. Backhanded shot to Bruce Shoebottom and a goal. Bruce Shoebottom with the first tally of the night. Of course, a few weeks ago down at the Rockland Ice Rink, he had two goals. One was waved off that would have given him the hat trick as Specs Common is having a wardrobe malfunction. I was talking to Bruce Shoebottom before today's game and he said, Boston 
he put up the best game of his alumni career in Rockland with two goals and a couple assists. And he said, today I am getting that hat trick. Now Shoebottom, saucy pass looking for Tim Sweeney. Broken up, not the bomber right in the slot. He shoots in, it's saved by Mulkern. Brand new ice surface at Izzy Afarina for this game. Virtue with the long shot, and it's tipped into the pads of Mulkern, and we'll have another faceoff. Jensen backhanded shot and saved by Mulkern now. Morton able to clear it but not out. LaRose a shot off the outside of the apron. Now off to Virtue on the half boards. Virtue up to David Jensen. Jensen with a shot and that one zings wide. Of course, Jensen, Song and Featherstone among others we saw at AZF last summer for a street hockey clinic, a widely attended street hockey clinic. And this one's gonna go wide. Now up to Bob Smith, he turns on the Jets. And he loses control of the puck. It might have been poked by Dumart. No, O'Neill a shot it kicked out by Jeff Dumart. This one might have found its way five hole, and it does. It's a goal, it's tied at one. O'Neill with the marker on that one. And we're all tied up at one goal apiece with 17 and a half to go in the first half. Now this one has potential for the Black and Blues. Saucer pass and unable to connect was Roy of the Massachusetts State Police. Rich Brennan across to Reggie Lemelin. Lemelin had a hat trick a couple of weeks ago in Rockland. Now uh, David Jensen. Featherstone back to Jensen out in front. And it's tipped just wide by Reggie Lemelin. Now to Guy LaRose. Now to Brennan, his shot stick save. And it's tipped out by Lemelin. Jensen with it. And the black and blues in a lot of trouble. Offensive zone time mounting, a shot by Jensen right out in front is blocked away by Mulkern and the black and blue is able to clear it all the way down the ice. Now with an offensive zone opportunity. A shot and McGee has it off the blocker of Dumart. Lemelin deking left and right, and he's goaled by Reggie Lemelin. An excellent deke move by Reggie Lemelin, and he gives the Boston Bruins alumni a two to one lead. Now Rick Nifty Middleton is for a shift today. Timely goal, 
Middleton, of course, coming to the Boston Bruins by virtue of a trade with the New York Rangers. If you really think about it, we have swindled the Rangers pretty bad in a couple of trades. We got uh, Phil Esposito. We got Rick Middleton, among many others. Bruce Shoebottom looking for Wallace, the guest skater for the Black and Blues today. He's only been skating for four months. Looks pretty impressive. Lutch was in in a breakaway, and Dumart comes up with a big stick save. 14 minutes to go in the first half of the 26th annual Black and Blues game. Now Roy has it tipped away by Wallace. Now O'Neill looking out in front. McGee with a shot. O'Neill comes away with it, sent out in front looking for Smith. He launches a shit a shot. Dumart has looked strong in that today. Nifty Middleton with Carter, and yeah, he tries to sneak on five hole, and McCurr makes the save. Scott Morton. Bob Smith again turning on the Jets. A shot and an excellent save by Dumart. Rick Middleton is in, he drops it back to Fred Ahern, Ahern looking for Wallace. And now Bob Smith receives it cleanly and he's got really impressive Jets, his shot and an excellent glove saved by Dumart and he sends it off the half board down into the neutral zone. Bob Smith, really impressive speed. Peter Cronup has his pass intercepted by Rick Middleton. Glenn Featherstone. Now Peter Cron comes away with it. Corona retired. Brockton Police Lieutenant. His shot and a save by Dumart. Some impressive names on this black and blues roster. Of course, Dave Buckley from ICE, who we talked to about four years ago on the day that, you know, the day after rather, that they had a big hand in catching the Boston Marathon bomber up in Watertown. He hadn't slept in like four days. It was all around wiped and he still laced him up for an hour, and it was really impressive. A lot of state police officers on this roster as well. Sweeney tried to sneak at five hole. Now Featherstone at the face off, face off dot. The bomber back to Featherstone, out in front for Tim Sweeney. And it's deflected wide. Now 10.45 to go in the first half. Now Scott Morton, able to chip it past Featherstone. Darty out looking for Roy doesn't connect to the half boards it goes. Now 
Now three on two for the Black and Blues. Now Bob swoops Sweeney. Out in front for the Bomber is shot and a goal. The Bomber. And a three to one lead for the Black and Blues. And Specs Common is going to whistle this goal off. He's saying no goal. A hooking call. Songin might be headed to the box. He's got three penalties against him. He should be in the, and Songin's got specs. Songin's got specs. They're headed towards the Boston Bruins alumni bench. Specs goes over the boards, and the Bruins alumni start beating the living daylights out of specs. Oh my God, he throws him up into the net. Oh my God, Tommy the Bomber Songin showing us why he hit, earned that nickname. He hits him with the right, and a left, and another right, and an uppercut. And Specs finally back over the boards. And he's a little bit worse for wear. The field goal is good. Specs Carmen. He's in rough shape on the far side of the ice. Sargon from Sweeney and Sweeney. Of course, Bob Sweeney, Tim Sweeney, both on the roster for the Bruins alumni today. Guy LaRose now, son of the six-time Stanley Cup champion. Out in front, and LaRose has it. Now out in front for Jensen, and he has it blocked off by Lech. Jensen gets it again, and he pops this one just wide. Leduc with a shot, and this one goes wide. Fred Ahern down for Reggie Lemelin, the first goal scorer of the day. Now Jensen. Jensen back to Lemelin in Gretzky's office. Up top to Brennan and a stick save by Mulkern. Now Guy LaRose has it into the slot. Out to Jensen. Jensen looking for Lemelin, broken up by Roy. And the Bruins alumni have an errant pass that goes all the way down to Jeff Dumart. Now in on a breakaway, a shot, and LaRose can't do anything with it as Mulkern spread his pads, and the net is off its moorings. Smith loses. An edge, a shot and a stick save by Dumar, and he's going to cover and passes it off to Fred Ahern. Ahern up to Rick Nifty Middleton. Middleton with a 51 goal season for the uh, Boston Bruins. A shot and an excellent save by Mulker, and he's going to hold for the faceoff with 5.40 to go in the first half. Now Tom O'Neill. Doherty with a shot, and saved by Dumart. Now tip home! Bob Smith out in front. Tabbing on the pass from 
O'Neill and Crone. And the score is three to two. The Black and Blues trailing the Boston Bruins alumni. O'Neill has it off the face off. Up to Smith, Smith off the stick of Wallace. Middleton's going at it with Donnie Garcia. Virtue into the black and blue zone is high saucer pass for Wallace doesn't connect. We have a whistle. It's a penalty shot. Peter Cron on the ice. So Peter Crone's going to take the, uh, rather John Wallace, the guest skater for the Bruins alumni, is going to take the penalty shot for the Bruins alumni. There's something wrong with the puck. One must wonder what the puck is going on. Specs, the referee, has gone to the Bruins bench. They've gotten him the... Wholesale sized puck. <laughs> John Horrigan has put it best. He says that somewhere in Brockton, there is a big wheel that has gotten jacked. And now Wallace using an illegal stick. Specs has gone to the Bruins bench again. And he comes out with an appropriate sized stick for the puck. No bend in that stick, so it'll be interesting to see the puck movement off of this shot. Uh, he's getting ready now, Wallace. There we go. Wallace deking and trying to keep control of this 18-inch tire. Wallace loses control of the puck. The puck is stopped motion. A shot and a score for Wallace is Mulkern. Stack the pads, and that is Mul that is Wallace's first Boston Bruins alumni goal. A Mickey Mouse goal scored on the penalty shot by John Wallace. Only been skating for four months with the Boston Bruins alumni for about half of that time. A minute and a half left to go in the first half. Morton up to Greg Doherty. Doherty up to Smith, the shot, and a goal. Bob Smith is second of the afternoon to bring the Black and Blues back within a goal. His second assist on the afternoon. Virtue looking for shoe bottom, and now it's Matt Roy. Virtue comes away with it. Specs Common has been spared right through the belly button. Specs looks like he's in a lot of pain over there. Nifty, play number Carter. Back to Nifty, give it go for John Carter. 
Carter out in front and a save by Mulkern. As the buzzer sounds, they're going to rule that the penalty shot did not count. So we're all tied up at three going into the break. A pretty impressive first half. And we are going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you the second half of action in the 26th annual Black and Blues versus the Boston Bruins alumni game right after this. All right, we're here with Rick Middleton. Rick, you are the head of the Boston Bruins alumni. Uh, tell us what brings you down to Brockton today. Well, uh, this is the 26th year the alumni has been playing the Black and Blues. Uh, I have not been the president for that long. I haven't even been playing for the alumni for that long. But it's uh, our oldest game. It's, it's one of our favorite games. We try, along with Peter Crone, try to make this our last game of the year because it's so much fun. It's a good way to end the season. And uh, Peter's done a great job over the years with the Black and Blues. He brings in different players, uh, you know, and everybody just seems to have a good time. And most of them are police. Not all of them on their team are police or FBI or state police or local police. And, and uh, the guys just seem to enjoy it so much, and it's always for a good cause. It's a lot of fun coming to these games. A couple of weeks ago, we were down in Rockland. We had Ray Bork, uh, a huge crowd for that one, huge crowd for this one. Talk about what it's like lacing them up with some of the greatest Bruins of all time, yourself included. Well, the, the fun of it is that we get the chance to play with guys you never played with on the Bruins because it's all different eras. And I'm one of the oldest on the team, Terry O'Reilly, myself, Reggie Lemel, and Tommy Songen. Well, we got Guy LaRose, you know, Timmy Sweeney played in the 90s. Uh, Bobby Sweeney I played with for a short time. But we got you know Terry Virtue, we got Hal Gill, uh, Andrew Raycroft coming up playing some games. Mike Motto, these are guys that are much younger than us, and trust me, we can use them in some of the games. <laughs> the young legs. Talk about what the Boston Bruins alumni does, how often you travel, where you travel to, and uh, what are some of your favorite charities to raise money for? Oh God, you know there's there's uh, never a favorite charity there because every cause is good, and, and there's so much need out there to raise funds for all these different causes. We're just happy that we can do them and that people ask us to be involved. They do all the work. They put the games on, they sell the advertising, they sell the tickets. We just really show up. But we try to put on a good show. We try to make sure that the, the players on the other team have fun, has fun, and, the, and their families in the stands enjoy it. So, um, you know, we, we play for Mass Down Syndrome, uh, some of the continual games that we play every year, the Fisher House, uh, I'm, uh, you know, for the last, we play 30 games plus every year, so if I'm forgetting one or two that we play, this is the oldest one that we play, but uh, Mass Down Syndrome, I, I think we're going on 10, 12 years uh, with that, so I'd like to, I'm, I'm hoping that a lot of these games continue year after year, but about 40% of the games are new, you know, and some, some games play like one, two years in a row and then take a break and then they come back. So we, we like to see the old faces come back also. It's, it's wonderful to be on the ice with, you know, again, Rick Middleton and the, the Bruins alumni, but also some of the great uh, guys that have, you know, law enforcement from uh, the great states of Massachusetts and Rhode Island. I was told to ask you about defusing bombs. Talk about that. So um, I'm actually a, an officer in the Navy. Um, originally, I was an explosive ordnance disposal officer doing, uh, like, bomb disposal work, and now I'm currently uh, an intelligence officer. Nope, uh, it's a great day and it's a childhood dream. Thank you very much. All right, we're here with Peter Krohn, the organizer of the Black and Blues uh, regular season finale for the Boston Bruins, the 26th annual. Yep. Tell us about the history of the game and what brings us to AZ Arena today. Well, it's the 26th. We've played these guys since 1989. It's been a wonderful time. We had old timers like Johnny Busick, Hi McKenzie, Milt Schmidt, great players. Today, the great players are still out there. I'm probably the oldest one here on the ice today, but I'm having a good time. And all the money we raise here, each guy pays to play in this game, and we raise all our money to go to different charities. So to date, we've raised over a half a million dollars, any number of charities in Brockton and the greater New England area. Now the Black and Blues, you guys have traveled to Canada, to Tampa Bay, to Russia. Tell us about what you guys do, and uh, what's it like skating with law enforcement officials from all over the state? Yeah, it's a beautiful time. We have a great friends. Most of these guys are the troopers. They come from uh, all parts of the state. It's just a good brotherhood and a sisterhood in some cases. We did our trips to Russia. We did one in 93, just after the Union had collapsed. 
and we did it one night in 2013. We went to uh, Moscow and Sochi, and I'll say the people are good, nice people. Uh, some of the police officials are a little bit more harder, but uh, we make good friends. We spread the word and have a good time, and we leave a, a good legacy behind. Yeah, you're skating with the best of them out there. What's it like skating with the Boston Bruins alumni, some of the greatest hockey players of all time? Well, my plan is to uh, be the gracious guest and let them beat us. And the same thing, we go overseas where we become the guests again. We let the other teams beat us. The uh, motto of the team is beaten all over the world. We try to keep that going. <laughs> all right, we're here with the man, the myth, the legend, the greatest referee of all time, never makes any bad calls, Donnie Garcia. Donnie, we're here in Brockton for the 26th annual Black and Blues game, the final game of the regular season. What uh, keeps you involved with the Bruins alumni and what's uh, special about this the, game? The great people that play against us and the great people that play with us, the charities that, that we support and the charities that those folks work so hard for, that's what keeps us coming back and keeps us going. And, you know, Peter has done a tremendous job over the past 26 years, and that's, that's saying a lot. To, to run an event like this for that long really is terrific. Now, we saw you down in Rockland. You're sporting a cast. Was it the bomber? Did he get to you? No, no. It was actually the shoe. Shoe uh, had his head down and just uh, kind of tried to go behind me, but you couldn't fit a piece of paper between me and the boards. But he decided he wanted to go behind me, kind of ran me over, and I hurt it a little bit. But that's all right. We kept going. So you're one of the all-star, you're, you're half of one of the all-star tandems of officials in all of hockey history. It's you and Specs come and tell us what's special about Specs and how you guys work together oh, so well. Oh, Specs is unbelievable. Specs is unbelievable. I mean, he can skate with a stick through his midsection, you know. He can, uh, he can skate with that hair. I don't know about the aerodynamics of that, but I mean, that kid is good. That kid is good. So you've called uh, a number of great games, the uh, NHL Winter Classic uh, a couple times. A lot of alumni games. Tell us about what's so special about being a referee, especially with the alumni. Well, it gives me an opportunity to hang with these guys. They give me, they give me a chance to be with them, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and we have had some pretty big games, but uh, this is probably the biggest right here. This is it. Any special memories? Yeah, there's a few. There's a few. Gillette Stadium was a lot of fun. Uh, Fenway Park was a, was a lot of fun. Uh, so there's, there's tons of memories, but... Uh, but more than anything, it's thinking back on all the, the charities that have, that have done such great work for kids and, and, for, and for other people that need uh, help. And it's just, that's, that's what it's really about, and it's fantastic. Last question, favorite Bruins player or NHL player that you've skated on the ice with? Rick Middleton. Rick Middleton. No wow. doubt about it. No doubt about it. To be able to share the ice with a legend like Rick is incredible and, and an honor cool. for me. This, this, this guy right here. Just that uh, I'm hoping to do this for a few more years, uh, stay on as president if they don't give me the boot. <laughs> but I, I really enjoy it. I like organizing it. I like putting the games together and the rosters. And, and we have more than 30 guys now that, that want to play. Some guys can only play a couple games a year because of their schedule. Other guys can play every game. So it's my job to kind of make everybody happy and get them, get them into as many games as possible. But I enjoy that. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into AZ Afrina for the second half of action between the Black and Blues and the Boston Bruins alumni. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing you all the action, and for this half, it's coming from the penalty bench. So coming into the second half, the score is 3-3. Three to three. The Bruins alumni with a series record of 25-0. and 0 in this game and now Glenn Featherstone to the neutral zone for Terry Virtue. Virtue to Featherstone. Featherstone very softly sticking it to Leduc. Now Virtue and Featherstone and this one sent ahead to Tim Sweeney. Sweeney leaving it behind for Swoop. Swoop all the way and stopping. Slowing down, sending it out to Virtue. Dragon Eddie, the new goaltender for the Black and Blues. That's Lech. Intercepted by Glenn Featherstone. Waits for the Bruins to get on sides. Glenn Featherstone now. 
Now Tim Sweeney in to the black and blue zone. A shot and a goal! That was Bob Sweeney on the goal, assisted by Tim Sweeney and Tommy Songen. So four to three, Bruins alumni on top. Now yeah, Glenn Featherstone in with the puck, sending it through the neutral zone to Tim Sweeney. Sweeney to Songin, Songin across the crease, and saved by Dragonetti. Doherty leaving it behind for Smith to O'Neill. Saved by Jeff Dumart, who's had a tremendous game so far. Bob Sweeney to Tim Sweeney. Sweeney in, and a blocker saved by Dragonetti. Out to the high slot for Fred Ahern. Down to Tim Sweeney. Tim around the boards for Sargon. The bomber in Betsy's office behind Dragonetti. Out of front, Ahern couldn't get a stick on it. And a three on one up ice for the black and blues. It's Doherty in. Dumart with a nice move to confuse the black and blues. Now a shot. And it's going to be a face off. No goal for the black and blues. As the net had come off its moorings. Shot and a save by Dragonetti into the glove. Twenty thirty left to go in the second half. Four to three, Bruins alumni on top. Yela Rose. Levelin blocked away by Dragonetti. Chipped away by Ahern. Out to Matt Roy. Chipped ahead, Guy LaRose turning on the Jets. It's a two on one with Reggie Lemelin. Lemelin to LaRose, now to Jensen to LaRose, and no shot able to get off cleanly. Jensen launches one and comes away with it. Brennan with some good stick skills to keep it in. Jensen to Lemelin, and sticks saved by Dragonetti with 19.10 to go. Jensen with a shot, 
And a save by Dragonetti. And he'll hold for the faceoff with 18.45 to go. Carter out to Virtue. Virtue off the half boys for Peter Crone. First time Peter Crone. He's in the head of Scott Gordon. Here's a breakaway now. Now breakaway, it's O'Neill. Tom O'Neill leaving it back for a rebound, there, a rebound goal for is it Donahue? Greg Darty on the goal for the Black and Blues, and we're back tied at four. Tom O'Neill and Peter Cron on the assists. Now Rick Middleton skating around with it to shoe bottom to Terry Virtue. Shoe bottom being a pest out in front. Now it's Bob Smith turning on the Jets to Tom O'Neill. To Smith, to O'Neill, to Doherty, and an excellent save by Jeff Dumart. Now Peter Crone with it now. Crone shot deflected wide. Now Smith leaving it behind for Scott Morton. Now Carter. And then a pet save by Dragonetti. O'Neill to Morton, back to O'Neill, backhanded looking back for Morton. Out to Darty out in front. His shot in is saved by Dumart. Now Wallace. Backhanding it around by Dumart. Dumart leaving it for Featherstone. O'Neill takes it away. Over to Smith to Darty and a save by Dumart. Now Tim Sweeney in on a breakaway. His shot in a stick saved by Dragonetti with 15 minutes to go. Lutch loses an edge. Shot, this one pops him up over the net. Featherstone to Sweeney. Now to Swoop. Swoop shot. And it's deflected wide. Swoop gets his own rebound. Tim Sweeney launches one. And another save. And this one off the shoulder of Dragonetti. Black and Blues under siege right now. 14 and a half minutes to go. All tied up at four. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Bring you all the action in the 26th annual Black and Blues season finale against the Boston Bruins alumni. From the penalty bench, Tim Sweeney to Bob Sweeney, and the shot is deflected just wide. Now Featherstone unable to keep it in. Sent all the way down. Dumart flipping it all the way down. Tim Sweeney in. It's a three on one. Sweeney with a shot, and it deflects wide. Now 
And we're going to have a hooking call. A double minor. Tommy Songin is going to go to the... And they're going to go at it. Songin is teaching Specs a lesson. Songin is going to go two minutes for stripping. Specs Common, two minutes for cross dressing. Conduct detrimental to the league. Specs Common can expect a call from the Department of Player Safety. This one into the protective netting. Saved by Dragon Netty. 12 minutes and 15 seconds to go into the second half. Peter Cron on the ice now swoop behind the net. Songin with it. Songin over to Swoop. To Hearn at the top of the key. This one all the way through the slot. Nobody on the receiving end for the Bruins. That's Glenn Featherstone with it in the neutral zone. Tim Sweeney with a shot and it's top shelf. A tie breaking goal for Tim Sweeney. Five to four, 11.30 to go in the second half. So it's Sweeney from Sweeney, Tim from Bob. With about 10.45 left to go in the second half. Brennan backhanding it to Shoebottom. Morton tried the indirect self pass. Unsuccessful. Shoe bottom with it now. Ten fifteen to go in the second half. Five to four Bruins alumni on top of the black and blues. Trying to move to twenty six and zero in the season or in the series. This one off the skate of Smith. LaRose and a glove saved by Dragonetti. This one deflected all the way down. The Bruins alumni back in. Reggie Lemelin with a shot. And Dragonetti covers it for the face off. Nine and a half to go. Shoe bottom 
Saucer pass for the Sweeney. 8.45 to go. Now shoe bottom. And he's gonna shoe bottom's gonna go for hooking. So shoe bottom's been hit with the book quite literally. And a penalty shot going to be taken by Greg Doherty. Shoe bottom throwing his equipment at him. A shot and a goal. Doherty ties it back up at five. With a penalty shot here. Shoe bottom was hit with literally the book two minutes for cross checking, two for tripping, two for hooking, two for high sticking, a five minute major, and a match penalty, and a year of probation. All tied up at five, leveling, and a blocker saved by Dragonetti. Yeah, Terry Virtue. Burns resetting in the neutral zone, seven minutes to go. A shot and Leveland sends it wide. Specs common. Uh, went to use the restroom, and it seems like he brought a souvenir with him back to the ice. Specs Common with a toilet seat on his back. And Dumar with an excellent save on Darty. Now Matt Roy in. Roy deking a shot and a score. And the Black and Blues have their first lead of the afternoon. Six to five, the black and blues on top with five and a half minutes to go. Wallace to Nifty, to Ahern, up to Featherstone, across the offensive blue line. Featherstone a shot, oh, what a glove save by Dragonetti. Now the Duke, Featherstone sends it off the door of the penalty bench. John Carter leaving it for Brennan to Rick Middleton. Middleton. 
Loose out in front, and Scott Morton sending it all the way down. Icing waved off. Fred Ahern across the red line. Now four minutes to go. Tim Sweeney for the equalizer. Oh, what a glove save by Dragon Eddie flashing the leather. Bex Common has uh, forgotten how to stop. Tom O'Neill now for a two goal lead for the Black and Blues. A shot, oh, what a save by Jeff Dumark. Bomber to swoop to Tim Sweeney, his shot. And blocked away by Dragonetti. Kept in by Brennan. Brennan to Ahern. Ahern to Bob Sweeney. Swoop trying to tuck it in. Leaves it for Tim behind the net. 2.40 to go and the Black and Blues have a one goal lead. They might get their first victory as Fred Ahern with a stick lift on Scott Morton. Now the bomber song and trying to tie it up. Send this game to overtime. A shot and a goal, Tim Sweeney, top shelf over the stick of Dragonetti. And we're all tied up, two minutes and 15 seconds left in the second half. Tim Sweeney, and another goal, and the Bruins alumni have the lead. Two goals in seven seconds for the Bruins alumni, and they have the lead again, and that's a hat trick for Tim Sweeney. Sweeney looking for his fourth. A shot, Dragonetti unable to control it, and it's sent all the way down. Icing waved off a minute and a half to go. Now, Tim Sweeney. A shot and a goal. Bob Sweeney is second of the afternoon, and the Bruins. With three goals in a minute, an offensive explosion, and Bob Sweeney again is second in the afternoon. Songin has just crushed Specs Common. Twenty seconds to go. Eight to six. Burns alumni and the closest this game has ever been. Now Shoebottom is going to have a goal waved off. Shoebottom attacking Garcia behind the net. 
The final score, eight to six. The Bruins alumni get a season ending victory. And that's gonna wrap it up here from AZ Alpha Arena. On behalf of everyone here at Brockton Community Access, our cameraman for today's festivities, Mike the Postman Simmons. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game. The final score, eight six folks, thanks for coming out. How about one more round of applause for the Black and Blues, Peter Crone, 26 years. We're with Bob Sweeney, Bob, the president of the Boston Bruins Foundation. Tell us about what you do with the foundation and your involvement with the Bruins alumni. Well, we support all children's charities throughout New England. And, um, you know, I've been always uh, enjoy playing the alumni games, and this one in particular usually ends our season. Peter Crone's been a, a great friend of the alumni for over 25 years. Class act. We're happy to come here and, and raise some money. Now... Sweeney's a big name in the Boston Bruins organization. Of course, the general manager, you've got Don Sweeney. We've got Tim Sweeney. You've got Tim Sweeney. You've got Bob Sweeney. It's a great name in Boston Bruins history. What's it like to lace, the, uh, lace them up with some of the greatest Bruins of all time? Well, it's fun. You know, Timmy, Donnie, and I never actually played together. We were in training camp together, but um, we all uh, had some good runs with the Bruins and uh, fond, fond memories. And, you know, it's, it's evolved. You know, Timmy's been uh, playing with the Bruins alumni now for a long time, as well as myself. And, and Donnie's done a great job since he's taken over as GM. Uh, very passionate uh, about what he does and uh, wants to make sure the Bruins are moving forward. And I think he's, he's got them going in the right direction. Talk about the Boston Bruins Foundation, what you guys do, your mission, and uh, who you guys help. Well... Um, we support all children's charities throughout New England, whether it's through health, education, community outreach, academics, athletics. Uh, we do a lot of uh, after-school programs in the city, but we also try to be pretty well diversified and get out in the suburbs of all over New England. And uh, it's, been, it's been fun doing it. Um, I love what I do, and uh, hopefully we'll continue to uh, support worthy charities in New England. No, I just want to give a shout out to Peter Crone. Like I said, he's been doing this for over 25 years, taking this team literally all over the world, and uh, nothing but the best to Peter. He's a class act, and uh, I want to salute everybody from the Black and Blues. I just uh, just want to thank you guys. Uh, I want to sh give a shout out to you guys for the 2013 salute that you did the day after they caught the Zarnayev uh, terrorist number two. Uh, we had state police that were involved in that, and you guys did a great video and a tribute to them, and I just want to give you guys a thumbs up. Great day for hockey today. It's beautiful outside. Huge crowd here at ACL. Stick handling right in the slot by number 42, Bob Sweeney. And a goal for the Bruins. And here's oh. Tommy Sonnen in our breakaway. He digs and he puts it into the empty net. Rick Middleton has it. Nice move there. Oh, what a save by the keeper. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a tribute to our fallen brothers and sisters of the tragic bombing attack on April 15 at the 117th running of the Boston Marathon. Our prayers and hearts go out to the victims, their families, and their friends. Especially Mark Richard, age 8, of Dorchester, Massachusetts. Lindsay Liu, age 23, of Shenyang, China, of Sushan Collier, age 26, of Somerville, Mass, and Ms. Crystal Campbell, age 29, of Bedford, Massachusetts. A special thank you to all of the first responders and public safety personnel for their unselfish acts and bravery, especially members of the Boston Police Department, the Boston Fire Department, the Massachusetts State Police, all of the federal agencies, the Watertown Police and Fire Department, the EMTs, the Boston Marathon officials, the runners, and the spectators. You are we, and we are you, and we are all together. We are Brockton strong, we are Boston strong. Here's a breakaway chance for the Black and Blues. He digs, he shoots, and he scores! Sweeney now trying to get a last second goal. He stops, and a last second goal! Two 
seconds remaining. Smith of the Bruins puts it in the back of the net. My honor and pleasure, we are here with an all-time Bruins legend, Rick Middleton, number 16. You're flying all over the ice. <laughs> Thank you. You are you're all over the offensive zone. It's pretty amazing to see your great speed, even after all these years from retiring from the Boston Bruins. Oh, it only looks like I'm moving fast because everybody else is moving a lot slower. <laughs> you are, you're literally flying all over the ice. One second you're in front of their net, and the other second you're breaking up a play in front of uh, your own net. Uh, so what what are the tensions like? I saw a couple of uh, some shoving and some pushing late <laughs> in the period there. Uh, are we going to see a fight before the end of this thing? Hopefully. I'd like to. I'd like to drop the gloves with uh, maybe shoe bottom. Uh, there's a little bit of bad blood from last year's game. We uh, got into it a little bit with them, and, you know, me and Bruce almost uh, had to drop the gloves. So hopefully we'll see some action before the end of the game. Is there any chance we see a fight in today's game? No, we don't allow it uh, in uh, alumni hockey because we're out here to raise money. It's all about the charity. It's not even about winning, although we hate to lose. We haven't lost in five years. Uh, he's fast. Sweeney, and he flips it into the net. What a shot. Backhanded pass broken up by Morton, and he skates it a three-on-one. Saucer pass, and a goal by the Black and Blues. Uh, Peter Cron, the retired lieutenant from the Brockton Police Department, will have a penalty shot. Oh, he shoots and scores! What a shot by Peter Cron. Rick Middleton spin around a pass. Oh, and a check. And there are players on the ice. Bodies flying everywhere here at AZ Arena today. <laughs> and about four years ago, became president of the Boston Bruins alumni, and I helped put on these games and schedule them. And we do, as an alumni, about 30 games a year around uh, New England. And we pretty much every year we do this game in Brooklyn with the Black and Blues and, that I've been playing. So thanks to Peter Crone and all his guys. And the Black and Blues team has a breakaway. Deeks, oh. and an excellent save. She won him in on a breakaway. He deeks, and he scores! What a backhanded shot. So now Shoebottom checks another player into the boys. And a good self pass there by the Black and Blues. There, he checks Peter Crone the into the boards. <laughs> and and Shubat was just being an overall pest to, to everyone. And a goal by number 11. And there's the goal. Shubat. And there's the hat trick. Let's see what the fans can do about throwing hats on the ice here. I'm sure the ref's arm is getting tired at this moment because he still has the delay penalty up. in the air for about two minutes now. And now he's just, he gives the signal over to the penalty box that his arm is getting tired. <laughs> and he finally blows the whistle. Here we go. Deeks and he shoots and scores! Scott Morton. A drop pass. And a goal. What a, what a perfect execution on a three on one. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson alongside Dave Buckley from Homeland Security Special Investigations. What a game. It's fun. A lot of fun out there today. And I'm sure you've had a busy week. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Uh, I'm a special agent with Homeland Security Investigations. Um, on Monday went to work and of course the bombing happened and um, I got home that day uh, about 8 o'clock Tuesday morning. Worked through the night and then um, got some sleep and I was just back in the office every day working overnight, uh, falling down leads, gathering evidence, trying to get the uh, the bombers, and finally it all came to uh, fruition yesterday. Uh, I want to thank you personally for your service, and I'm sure everybody watching, all the viewers would like to thank you. I want to thank you personally for your service, and on behalf of our viewers, the full staff, I want to thank you for your service. Thank you very much. And it was a great game. Thanks a lot. Thank you.